Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Dino. I'm a co-founder and CEO at GIS Cloud. Uh, first, like a quick poll. Uh, who here knows what GIS is? Nice. So probably if you, you use it or you can use it in terms of maps, Google Maps, but probably also if, if you are on this lecture and not on the mystery panel, um, you have uh, used it in the past as a technology. So GS Cloud, we are a platform for collaborative mapping. We enable organizations to collaborate around spatial data and various industries from utilities, energy, health, etc., to collaborate around spatial data to make those workflows more efficient in the cloud. And we are running that as a service, as a software and platform as a service with a platform that we built and we are hosting it on Amazon. So we build the REST APIs and Map Engine and various web and mobile products that we then offer to our clients worldwide. So the big need, the recent need actually from our clients in the era of internet is that they want to work with maps offline. Because often they can go out on a field to do some collections like tree inventory, some inspections, so public works, and sometimes you're not connected. So that was actually driving us to develop the mobile version of our map engine, uh, which I personally uh, was actually designing and building. And uh, I'll talk today about SQLite and how we actually used it to really render large maps on a mobile phone with limited resources. So something about maps and map data. So how map and actually map data is structured, it's nothing special, it's data. So you have a table, uh, you have various attributes that define uh, your model or the world in this case. But there is one special, of course, uh, attribute here that is geometry. So with geometry, we can describe and model uh, basically anything in the world with points, lines, and polygons. So in this case, this is like um, a layer of streets in Zagreb. So we have a category or a street name, of course, direction. You can have many of these. And how you deal with data or how you present it in a, let's say, table or non-spatial form, it will be a table. It will be something that you, you can paginate, that you can scroll infinitely, etc. So if you're dealing like with million records, that's not a problem, right? You can always scroll, you can set up your paginations because you're always looking at just one part of the data set. But in case of maps, this is not that much interesting or intuitive because we want to see maps and we can see them like this. So this is like a street network, uh, raw data, not styled. So this is like the source of Google Maps and the maps that you use in its raw format. So the trick with maps in general is because there are cases often that you need to see large parts of the data set at once. So if you zoom out on a map, if you go on a global scale, every record in your database actually has qualified to be rendered because it belongs in that extent, in that view. So it's not that easy to actually crunch all the data and decide what you will render or how you will actually uh, optimize the entire process. And when you style a map, so this is one, one case that we style with, with our technology, so we want, you can make that data with all that attributes, you can make it look really pretty and that you can easily understand what's going on. So this is like a real estate map showing polygons colored depending on the use of, of the polygon or the, or the state. But in the online world, the maps, map is actually delivered and rendered usually as a tile service. This is great because it's very efficient to deliver over the internet to various clients. The server is then generating those tiles because you can divide the entire map and the view on the map, you can divide it on zoom levels. And on the level zero, you have only one tile. So that's the entire data, entire data set. If you, if, when you zoom in, you get more tiles, but also more detail. Uh, and in that way, as you zoom to the, let's say, level 20, there is one trillion possible tiles. So you can really, you can really add up. But the great thing is that all the po possible requests that you are making are, are uh, predetermined. So you can cache that kind of data on the back end. You can cache it on a CDN uh, to distribute that kind of content to your clients. So it can be very efficient to deliver. But it's hard to render because on the tile zero, you're actually dealing with the entire data set and you need to do that usually on the back end. So I'll talk about how we did some optimizations here and actually usually these maps are rendered like raster tiles, so like PNG, JPEG, or, or so. And we are doing some things with vectors where we can actually use that raw vector data that I mentioned before, the line, lines, polygons, and uh, points, and actually deliver them as vector tiles 
to the client. Also some difficulties with map rendering and actually with GIS, there are lots of various data sources, data sets that we want, that we want to include into our maps. Sometimes these are files, sometimes these are other databases or web services, standard or non-standard. So these are kind of bottlenecks that you want to avoid. Also, rendering can be difficult, like I mentioned before, especially if you are working on a device which has limited hardware in terms of CPU and memory. So usually that's, of course, a phone. Even those, those are getting quite stronger recently, but still it's a limited and constrained environment. And the technologies that, uh, the technologies that exist today with maps like open source or proprietary, they were not built for mobile first. They were actually built for client-server environment where you have a server with lots of CPU, RAM, and everything, which is actually rendering those maps and then delivering tiles to the clients. So some strategies how to optimize map for speed. Uh, we never want to render data directly from the source because, like I mentioned before, the source is the bottleneck. You don't know what's on the other end. If there's like external service or a database that you cannot control, your maps will be actually uh, rendered uh, as that's the uh, at the speed of the slowest service, right? Because it needs to wait everything. So one solution that the industry is proposing is to seed map tiles. So that pyramid I, I have shown on one of the first slides, you can actually generate those tiles in advance and then ju just push them on a CDN, on a service that can actually just deliver them, which is great because there is no rendering on the fly, you're just serving the content. But it takes lots of time to go to the pyramid. If you want to go really deep, you have this huge number of file styles that you need to generate. If something changes, you need to go into, through the entire process. So that's not really good if you want to do something in real time. Uh, also, the idea is, what if we take all the data from different data sets, different sources, and put it in a one format, in a format that we can easily and quickly read, so that we consolidate the data basically on a, in a single format that we can control, and then optimize our map engine for that format. One obvious approach is use a database, right? A uh, very popular uh, choice in uh, Geo is Postgre plus PostGIS, which is a GIS extension for which gives you uh, geometry manipulation, also spatial operations. So in general, we organize our data in databases. We have all these great features. We are using it to build various services, APIs around it. But if we are thinking just about rendering maps, database is not that ideal, right? Because there are lots of these features that we don't need. There is an overhead. It's a service that needs to be run on a port that we need to connect to. And if we are thinking about mobile, we will not uh, install Postgres on a, on a, on a, on a phone, right? I'm probably you could do it, but it does not make much, much sense, right, to run it uh, as a local host. So the obvious answer and, of course, the theme of this talk is SQLite. SQLite is the most widely deployed database in the world. So uh, everybody is, having, is, is using SQLite even though you're not, not knowing it because every phone in your pocket has it by default. So all the OS, Android, and, and iOS is using it for their data and to your contacts and everything is actually SQLite. Uh, the operating systems, browsers, Skype, lots of apps are using it because SQLite is an embeddable database. So you don't install it. You, you just link the database engine with your code. And the code in, as a CLIB is only 400 kilobytes, so it's very light. Uh, it makes, this makes it portable because you can then port it on not just you can run it also on a web on, on the server, but you can port it on the phone, you can port it everywhere because you can link it with, with any kind of desktop or client server software. And it's built for speed. It's incredibly fast, incredibly resilient, and uh, uh, they have optimized it to work in very, very constrained environments. And it simplifies because you don't have to work with a client server architecture on a local host, let's say. So one idea, and also how industry is actually using SQLite today, uh, they are storing those tiles in the database because you can store it also as files and then easily query it on a, on a level and a XY. Uh, and the tiles itself, it's a good strategy if you want to render smaller amounts of data or, or let's say extend just small part of the data set. Because if you go deep, then again, you have lots of these tiles that you need to pack in that format. And the tiles are lossy because there is uh, always the next zoom level that you can go to, and in the pyramid scheme, you need to stop at, at some point, right? You cannot go infinity. So 
it's a lossy format. And it takes, again, time to generate. So the idea is that we actually store raw data. So that table from the first slide with all the attributes and ge geometry that we store it in the, spatial in the SQLite. There are some ni uh, nice extensions like SpatialLite and RasterLite, which are like spatial engines or extensions for the uh, SQLite. Uh, with this approach, you get the lowest possible storage requirement and bandwidth requirement because you're not putting any redundancy in the, in the database. You're putting the original data and with, with the full precision. So you can render maps from it on the fly. You can also query the data. So it's not just map rendering, but if you need to access some kind of attributes or geometries, you can do that directly on the, da on the SQLite database. But there are some uh, difficulties how actually you could uh, render and process the databases on, a, on, a, on, a, on a mobile phones because it's limited hardware. So you need to think a, a, bit, a bit about optimizations. Uh, here is one example. It's an open street map of Croatia. So the entire road network of Croatia, if you download it today from uh, open street, it's around 97 megabytes in a shape file, a standard GIS format. So if you convert it to SQLite, you get a similar amount of data. But then, of course, you need to build indexes because you want to query the data quickly. Then it adds up around 106. But then if you zip it, and you will zip it if you will ship it on a phone, it's only 50 megabytes. So you get the entire road network of Croatia for, in, uh, for a 50 meg megabyte requirement to download it to the phone. So it's really, it's really uh, compressed. And how to load data from your for format to SQLite, there are some uh, nice tools and very uh, easy to be used commands. So OG, OGR to OGR provides a way to convert any kind of spatial format in, into different spatial formats. So in this case, with a simple command, you can convert your original data sets from that source to SQLite. And then you create indexes with the, with the second command. And then you get some tables. You get roads tables for that example. You also get some new tables like indexes, which is actually, actually an R3 index, which is very quick. 2D index that you can use to query the bounds or extents of your records so that you can easily find out which data you should render or not. And some other meta, uh, meta tables like geometry and spatial refer reference systems and similar. This is how it looks to render or query, actually to query the data. You just select from the table. So that's the first query. The second query is actually the key, how you can uh, select the data just on, on the extent that you are interested in. So you, have, you are panning and zooming your map. You want to get the data from the, from the view. You can easily uh, query it and query the R3 and intersect the R3, which is the 2D rectangle index, with your uh, view extent in, uh, rectangle. So it's a very simple uh, uh, query. And that works really, really fast because you're actually querying an index. So one obvious approach would be when I have my map view, I will then basically, at each pan and zoom, query the SQLite database and then render what I got back. But then again, you are always hitting the database and hitting on the phone, and it can take time and, and, and resources to the re the, uh, render the data because each time you pan, you get new possible features that fall into your extent. So the idea is that actually you can do, you can do tiles but tiles that will be actually produced by the mobile phone itself. So you, again, put that pyramid tile scheme. Uh, we go vector approach so that we can actually generate vector tiles so we can cache them on the phone. Once you have opened up your map once, the second time, it will not process and render the tiles. It will actually just load them because phones have also disk drives to store files on. So we can cache. And the biggest problem is how actually to query the data if you're dealing with a big data set. So this is the approach we use. We query first the R3 for features that intersect with a tile extent. So tile extent has, uh, uh, you, can, you can query the, uh, the, the SQLite with your tile extent. You remove all those features which are actually too small to be visible at a certain zoom level because if you're not zooming in, it will be just a sub-pixel, uh, uh, sub-pixel uh, feature, so you just remove it. Then you make another query to load the data with all the geometries and attributes. Once you did that, you can downsample because on a zoom scale, you don't have to have all the details. Because you, if you are zoomed out, let's say you're looking at the Croatia, you zoom out, you don't have to see the entire coast in all the details. You can simplify that. There are algorithms for that. 
So you, you downsample, and then you crop. What you have, you have got back, you crop with the tile extent. So with that approach and with the format that we built, you actually get a vector tile which is in pixel space, uh, which is very compact. It's very easy to be rendered on the fly because you're using SQLite and it's very quick. And then a client like HTML5 Canvas or, I don't know, uh, MapKit or it can be a native or a web can easily read that format and just draw on that tile the map with styles and, and all. Also, what you can do, you can do search. SQLite has a built uh, full text search engine, which is really, really fast. Uh, there are a couple of generations of that uh, search engine. So the latest generation got a huge performance increase, requires less resources, so you can then query the data search for your streets, your polygons, your parcels, and basically get full access to your data in, in, in a very quick, quick way. You can also do rasters. I will not cover them much in this talk. There are some uh, libraries like Rasterlite, which is similar like Spatialite for SQLite, where you can put uh, imagery like JPEGs, TIFFs, and then also re read them on the fly on the device. You need to do some pre-processing to do that. Or you can use GDAL, which is uh, you can strip it down to a simple or, let's say, light version without any drivers, just a TIFF, and then link it with your application code uh, for a mobile app. Uh, regarding synchronization, so uh, once the data has been copied, you can always refresh it by doing a full dump, but that's not that smart. You can also use the SQL language to actually make the syncs, to make the changes both from the server to, to from the server to the mobile phone, but also if you are doing some edits on the mobile phone, you can go from mobile phone back to the uh, to the server. Here, in, uh, here is one example. I don't have a, like a video or live demo, but I'll just show you some screenshot, uh, screenshots. So this is uh, one map showing, I think, 100,000 polygons, so parcel map showing all the parcels in a, in, a, in a certain city in our web app. Then we have a mobile app where you can open up uh, that map or other maps and view it. And then you can go offline just to download the entire map into SQLite. So that's one API call, which is going on the server, it's downloading, and then you get that 100,000 polygons into 50 megabytes uh, of storage on your, on your phone. And then you can go offline and render the data quickly on any zoom level. You can go very deep, you have all precision, and you can zoom out and basically also have the entire data set very, very quickly. And you can query, you can touch a polygon, get the attributes back from the SQLite database, to do the edits or just to view the information. Okay, that's it. Thank you.